y'all, Tiffany with Minimalist Mom Life. Welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you guys some tips that I have for keeping a clean home when you have a house full of little children. I know that that is um, kind of a common struggle with moms and uh, these are just some of the tips that I live by in our house to try and keep the chaos at a minimum and a nice clean home um, for our family while still having four children four and under. So I'm going to get right to my tips because it's nap time like I say in every video <laughs> and someone is bound to wake up if I make this long. So. There are five of these tips and I'll get right to them. My number one tip, and if you've ever been a server or a waitress or whatever, then you've, you're familiar with this idea, but it's full hands in, full hands out. And that means when you are leaving the kitchen and you're going to your child's bedroom, if there's something in the kitchen that needs to go to the bedroom, we need to go to the dining room along the way, you have your hands full. I am almost always carrying a baby on me or wearing a baby on me, so one hand is already full. But I try to, as long as, much as I'm moving around the house, I always have something that I'm bringing that maybe needs to go back to another place. And teach your kids to do the same thing. So if you're done with breakfast in the dining room and you're about to go to their room and you're about to go read with them, make sure if they took their shoes off during breakfast, they're picking up their shoes and putting them back in their bedroom or you know, vice versa, whatever it is that we're looking around the room that we're in and we're seeing if anything very quickly needs to go to another room that we might be heading to. You'll be amazed at how much time that saves you from having to do a little bit of like tidying later because you're kind of just always tidying in that sense. Um, my second tip is to teach your children to clean. And I mean from like the time they are walking, <laughs> like nine, 10, 11 months old, depending on how old your kids are when they walk, on. You're teaching them to help pick up something and put it in a basket. Very, very simple. Now my third tip that goes along with this is that if you limit the amount of stuff, again, this is the minimalism channel, if you limit the amount of toys that your children have, they are much more capable of quickly picking them up and of picking them up from a young age. Because if there are 10 blocks on the carpet, even at 18 months old, your child, your son, your daughter can understand all 10 of those blocks need to be in the basket. That's not overwhelming, that's not blocks go here and cars go here and toy figurines go here and you know you have this whole system. It's a very simple, you have a few toys, they go into one basket, that's a quick, easy concept that your children can understand. If you do have a more complicated toy set up for your kids and make sure you're teaching them how to do it. A lot of times with children, I have found that if they're not wanting to clean up their room, like if I said, okay, boys, go clean that up, and for some reason they're not, if I just go in there and literally pick up one toy to start beginning to help them, and I do this in a patient way, not a, I'm going to throw this away if you don't big it up way, but a, like, you know, hey, okay, mom's going to help, and I put one in, I say, okay, now George, you put one in, and Martin, you, and I'm in there kind of giving them a little bit of instruction and a little bit of boost to what they're doing, and they're much more um, willing <laughs> and ready to clean up. So make sure you're teaching your children how to clean up. I, for the life of me, do not understand parents um, that are cleaning up after their children that are much older than my kids, but even, I mean, again, my oldest is only four. We foster children that are older than that, um, but really four <laughs> is what I'm familiar with. They can clean up, and when I was young, I'm the fourth out of five kids, my parents had us cleaning up our stuff and stuff in the house from a very young age. It's teaching them life skills for later on so that their dorms aren't disgusting when they go to college. <laughs> um, and just teaching them how to be responsible and take care of their things. So every day teaching them, it's not something that's going to be instantaneous. Um, you're going to have different personalities. I know one of my children, it's very easy for him to clean up. That's something that just seems kind of natural to him to want order. And another little boy is the most laid back person in the whole world. And I'm pretty sure he could care less if he was ever cleaned. So it's going to be a little bit harder for him to want to clean just out of his own nature, but that doesn't mean that I can't still teach him how to be responsible, take care of his toys, and pick them up. Along the note of teaching kids to clean up, is teach them to clean up when an activity changes. So, I don't do this like a hard strict if you're, you know, if you're done with the blocks and we're starting school time, the blocks always have to be clean. Because I don't want it to always be like we're always cleaning. And kids are gonna move to activity, to activity, you know, quite often. They have limited attention spans. But I think teaching them that, hey, you know, are we done with certain things when we're done with them, they have to be cleaned up. For instance, when you play Play-Doh with the table, you've got to clean up the Play-Doh before I'm gonna let you go outside, or we're gonna go read books or do something else. Or if you've painted, or Legos, things that we cannot leave out, then we're gonna have to clean them up. Now, I have one toy box for my kids in their Elliot's room, my youngest boy's room, and um, when they get the toys out in the morning and they're everywhere, I don't have them clean up just because we start school time or because we go outside because I know they're going to go right back to that particular activity and that is an area that I'm okay with toys being and it usually gets cleaned up around nap time and then again at bedtime but other than that I allow there to be toys out because I don't want my kids. The idea is not that we're going to spend our whole life cleaning. That's not what I'm trying to get them to do 
but I do want to teach them responsibility and I do want to teach them how to have an order chaos free home. So working on that with them. And then I already mentioned this before, but my third tip of course is going to have to be to limit stuff. I mean, that's just so simple. The less you have, the less you have to clean, the less you have to organize, the less overwhelming it is for you to clean up and the less overwhelming it is for them to clean up. The less stuff you have and the less they can just dump everywhere and not touch. Be sure when you are looking to purge your children's toys that you're watching what they're actually playing with versus what they touch because it's very different to play with a toy than it is just to touch a toy or to dump a toy out of a bucket. So pay attention to that and then just limit what they have. If you're very attached to toys or you feel like the grandparents spent a lot of money on a toy so you don't want to donate it, then try the toy rotation of just putting them up simply at the top of the closet or they're in your closet and they come out every once in a while. Um, we kind of know with Legos. Legos is not something they can get down. I have to get the Legos for them because those are little, it's a little more time consuming to pick them up. Um, and it's an activity that I somewhat want to uh, monitor with my youngest son. And so that's kind of a special thing. So that's not something they can always just get out and dump out and make a huge mess right before you're trying to get to Sunday school or something like that. My number four tip, and I know parents have all different opinions on this. Again, this whole video is just my opinion and how I keep my home clean. But we keep the kids' toys in their room. <laughs> so we don't have a playroom. We have six people in our house and about a 1200 square foot house. But even if I had the bedroom to make into a playroom, I wouldn't make it a playroom. Um, I think it's their stuff. It should be in their room. That makes sense to me. And I feel like if the toys are in their room, then like I said, when they, you know, first get the toys out in the morning, have that basket, the one basket they have, um, then I'm not in a rush for them to always be cleaning them up because the rest of the house is still in order. So if somebody needed to come over, like when we were foster parents, you had caseworkers and people over all the time. There wasn't a disaster of the house for me to pick up because I felt like someone was coming over or if I'm hosting Bible study or something. They have their toys. They are in their room. If they make a mess in that room because they are having fun with that one basket of toys, even there, the, the mess is limited. But if they make a mess of it, I that's fine. Like that's their room. That's their space. They're given that space to play. It's not all over the house. They are welcome to bring their toys in the rest of the house and they do. But that's just like the hand, full hands in, full hands out. Those toys don't get left everywhere. And because that basket of toys is not in our living room, it's in their room, then that's where they're going to tend to play. And so then when they're playing there and they're you know, building things, making all sorts of stuff, that's not the entire house feeling like it's out of order. That's one room that I might go in and be like, oh my gosh, this is a mess. But it's also a little boy's room. So I wouldn't expect it to be anything other than kind of a mess when they're busy being children and having fun. I'm not gonna expect them to have you know, a Pinterest Pottery Barn perfect room, I'm gonna expect it to be used. So I would definitely recommend that. If you do want toys in a space like your living room because you feel like, well, you spend time in there. We don't watch TV, um, so hardly ever. So there's really not a, we don't have cable or anything or Netflix. So there's not, our living room gets used for hosting, for Bible setting and stuff like that, but it doesn't get used for just general play that often because we go in their room to play. Like I have a brown rocker in there and I'm nurse Lucy, or I read to them, or I just sit in there and play with them. So the toys aren't in the rest of the house. If you have a living room that you do use, it really is kind of the hub of your house. For us, it's our kitchen and dining room. Then you can have a small basket of toys, but again, make that a very manageable amount to where, okay, there's 15 things in the toy box. And so if we are rushing out the door and the toys aren't picked up, it will take you two minutes or less to get all of those put in the basket. Much more manageable than allowing the toys to be everywhere and then feeling like it's never clean. Because where the toys are is where the kids are going to be to some degree. Um, so I definitely recommend that. And then my number five tip um, kind of goes against what I think, again, a lot of people probably do. But that is let them see and hear you clean, okay? So rather than doing all of your cleaning during nap time where they just constantly wake up to everything is clean and perfect and mom did it for me, let them hear the vacuum. Let them hear you clean and see you clean. So they see the amount of work it takes to have a clean home. A lot of times I do um, kind of my power hour, a little bit of like morning chores, my daily chore first thing in the morning. And um, sometimes I just do a little bit of it and I do my two hour block with the boys and then I clean. But either way, it's when they are awake. And I like to stress to them, hey, mom is doing this work and then we get to have fun. So let's do this work quickly. And if it's a mess that they made, they shouldn't have made, like it's because they were disobedient in some way or just childish, I'll remind them if this mess wasn't made, we could already be having fun. Like, this has to get done because I'm teaching them responsibility and you can't choose all the fun things before the work in life. That's not how the real world will work. So I want to teach them that. But I'm also showing them if we do this quickly or if you help mommy do this, 
that we can get this done and then we can get on to the fun parts of life. Um, kind of a thing that always reminds me of that is when I was growing up, I was homeschooled and my mom, I hated math, I always hated math and still do. <laughs> and she would always have me do my math first because you get the hard stuff that maybe you don't like done and then you get to have the fun. And I try to teach them the same thing with cleaning. Like you may not like this or maybe we want to go be doing something else, but mom has to do the breakfast dishes so you know you can empty something or you clear your plate off the table and that helps it go faster so then I can go outside and play soccer with you. Um, rather than doing all the cleaning for them and they kind of have this magical fairyland that they don't ever have to do anything and you know mom just works, 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 works and then um, they never see kind of how hard she works and know that they should probably help out and be a part of it. And you'd be surprised when your kids see you working, they want to work alongside you anyway, be with you and do the grown up thing, how much they really can help. But you are going to have to take the time to teach them and they're not going to do it perfectly, but I promise you it'll be worth it. Last night I was emptying the dishwasher and my just turned four year old just came over and on his own emptied out all of the silverware from the little silverware basket. And that was just him wanting to take part in helping mom so we could get on to our fun family night activity. I didn't ask him to do that, but I think already in his brain it was working like, hey, if I help mom and we do this quicker, then we can get on to the fun part. So let them hear you, let them see you. Besides at nap time, you know you need a break as well. And you'd be so surprised at how much they can learn to do to really give you some help. So I hope that those tips helps you guys keep a clean home, keep the chaos at bay. Um, if you have any tips that you'd love to leave in the comments down below for all of us to read and enjoy, I encourage you to do so. Remember that they're only little ones, but please do not fall for the lie that having a clean home means you don't have time to paint with your kids or play with your kids or whatever. It's not true. I absolutely believe you can have both, but it's going to take a lot of organization and time in the um, front end of it for it to get into a role and get into a movement, into a schedule. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you on my next one. Bye.